local derby. David versus Goliath. With Featherstone Rovers versus Featherstone Lions at the Big Fella Stadium on Sunday, 3rd of January 2016. £5 adults, £3 concessions, and just £1 for juniors. Good afternoon everybody, welcome to Big Fella Stadium, a wet and windy Sunday afternoon, the good old days of winter rugby are back. It's a Featherstone Derby, Featherstone Rovers against the Featherstone Lions. Quick run down of the team news for you first of all, starting with the Lions, our full back is number one Ian Jackson. In the three quarters, number two is Kieran Redfern, number three is Ricky Williams, four is Josh Hardcastle, and number five is Davy Garahan. In the half pass, number six is Richard Franklin, and he will partner number seven, Jake Perkins. In the front row for the Lions, number eight is Adam Curtis, and number 11 is George Nuttall. And in between those two is Hooker, number nine, Dean Gamble. In the second row for the Lions, number 21 is Danny Glassell, and number 12 is Joe Fox, and the loose forward is number 13, Scott Glassell. On the bench for the Lions, number 14 is Jack Townend, 15 Sam Millard, 16 is Brendan Gibbons, number 10 is Phil Van, and the two teams come out now. Number 17 is Gas Gale, number 20 is Anthony Yates, and number 18 is Sam Wilson. A very youthful side for the Rovers this afternoon. <coughs> Only a couple really recognised names. Our first team is in with a match today. Our full back is number one is Brad Sutcliffe. In the three quarters, number two, Ryan Stratford. Number three is Will Plimmer. Number four is Liam Blockley. And number five is Tommy Newbold. Retaining his place from last week, but moving from full back to half back, is number six, Louis Brown. And he will partner number seven, Danny Salaby. In the front row, two first teamers. Number eight is Luke Cooper. He will be alongside number 10, Jack Coventry. And in between those two is number nine, Matt Stableford. Number 11 is Curtis McDonald. And number 12 is Ethan Flowers. And the loose forward is number 13, Brad Hill. It looks like the Lions are going to get first use of the ball. They're playing up the slope in the first half. In that away strip of red and white hoops. The Rovers bench consists of a 14, Jacob Jewett, 15, Matty Hobson, 16 is Jake Joint, 17 is Brandon Conway, as Rovers get the game underway, 18 is Josh Field, number 19 is Jack Carroll, and number 20 is Chris Holland. And today's match referees from Halifax is Jamie Bloom. So here are the Lions then. Bringing that ball forward, number 10, Phil Banks. Looks to be a starter to, uh, instead of being on the bench. Get a confirmation of that one for you in a moment. Here are the Lions then. Attacking down this left hand edge. And there's Adam Curtis. Dean Gamble waits to tap in half back in, wheels that ball inside. And here are the Lions then, just short to the 40. There's the last tackle. Gamble moves that ball inside. And there's a kick over the top from Richard Franklin. That ball bounces horribly on this wet, sticky pitch. You can see the surface was a kicking up. And that's a good return from Rovers. The conditions are going to play a massive part in this match. And here are the Rovers and looking to work out from their own quarter now.
That's a good drive in. And Matt Stable for the way he's that's in half back now. He'll move the ball out to the right. And there's a, an early kick over the top from Rovers. It's good, it's an awful kick. What a, the conditions showing their part massively there. The Lions not able to take that ball. Held up horribly in, this, in these conditions. And now Rovers with scrum head and feed. 35 metres out centre field. The conditions really did play their part there with a horrible kick. So the first chance, the first attacking chance then for the Rovers. And here they come now. We're full back, Brad Sutcliffe. He plays the ball to Cuthbertson, who moves that ball inside. Good defence there from the Lions, three in the tackle. Cuthbertson again, and right, Rovers and working it through the hands. But great defence there from the Lions, Josh Hardcastle with that tackle. Here's Danny Salby with a kick over again, it's held up in the mud. But on this occasion, the Lions have come up with the ball. Great defence there from the Lions. And now they're looking to work out from their own 20. But good defence from the Rovers were yet again. Oh, just a mini break there for the Lions, but Rovers strong in defence on that occasion. Too strong though, says Mr Bloom, in conceding the penalty. So the first penalty of the afternoon goes to the Lions. And that is the penalty now. And the Lions are now going to start just short to halfway. Hardcastle with the tap. George Nuttall with the drive, and here goes Hardcastle taking it in now. And it's the other forward, but the ball has worked through the hands. It was an excellent effort, but Joe Fox just not able to take that ball in. And so the Lions. Fancy that could be the story of today. Missed opportunities on both sides at the minute. Ball like a bar so the conditions underfoot, very difficult for both teams. It can make for a very tricky match. With five minutes in, it's Featherstone Rovers nil, Featherstone Lions nil. But here are the Rovers attacking down that left hand edge. Good defence. But the penalty conceded there, Dean Gamble, one of the more experienced players in this Lions team, holding on just too long. So Rovers with the penalty now. And they're going to start 25 metres out. Stableford with that tap, and the ball's worked inside now. But look at that defence from the Lions, folks. The ball's come loose. Lions went to pick it up. What's the referee going to say here? It's knock on from Rovers. Head and feed goes to the Lions. That, I fancy, will be the story of this match today. So the scrum is packed down and the Lions in possession again. Just outside their own 20, though, centre field now. And the Lions attacking this Rover's edge. With David Garrahan. Hardcastle again, that's a good drive in from Hardcastle. The pass though is behind everybody. The Lions lose the momentum. What's the referee going to say here? It's penalised Featherston. What's the penalty for? I'm not so sure. I don't think anybody on the pitch knows what the penalty is for. Either way, it is a penalty a hand in, says the referee. So, penalty for the Lions. 
is taken towards that far side, finds touch comfortably, and the Lions now 15 metres inside the Rovers' half. And here's the first drive from Joe Fox. Rovers are in red. Rovers are in red. I do apologise for us, it looks like Rovers are actually playing in the red. I thought Rovers were in the home tip of the blue, being the home team. So here's a kick through from the Rovers. The ball is put dead, so it's going to be a drop out. No? What's the referee saying here? Yes, it is going to be a drop out under the sticks. So the Lions then with the dropouts. Here are the Rovers now then. Here is Matt Stableford. But the ball is knocked on again. Knock on now by the Lions, so another scrum down heading feed, this time to Rovers. Dread to think what the scrum count's going to be at the end of this match. Or the error count, it's very high at the minute. We've barely got ten minutes on the clock. Rovers are man shy in the scrum now. The Fully manned. Here are the Rovers now then. It's Brad Hill. Up to the 20. It's a good drive by Curtis McDonald, but good tackling by the Lions. Scott Glassell involved. Cuthbert's some weights. He moves that ball along the line to Hill. Hill finds Luke Cooper. <coughs> Cuthbertson stumbles in the tackle, so Luke Cooper in his hat in half. Saw the gap but slipped. And now the ball's knocked on. Again, the ball comes loose. It's a mud bath, folks. This is an absolute mud bath of a match. We've got ten minutes on the clock. It's Featherston Rovers nil. Featherston Lions nil. And it's an absolute mud bath. Torrential rain here at the big fellas. So the scrum goes down, it's going to be head and feed to the Lions. No, it's the Rovers, sorry. So the ball's come loose that time and a knock-on from the Lions as well. So two knock-ons, first head and feed goes to the Lions. It's almost becoming a knock-on-a-thon at the moment. Referee sending the trainers off. So the Lions, out to the base of the scrum now, taking on the line. The surface walls are kicking up again. Over on that far side, and the Lions has to play the ball, it's worked back inside. 
through the hands it comes for. Good defence from Rovers. Phil Banks involved in that tackle. There's a kick over the top. That's held up beautifully. And here's the return. What's the chase? Like I said, good chase. That's an excellent chase from the Lions. And the Rovers now having to work out from their own 20. Here's Cooper. Sorry, Coventry it was, sorry. And there's a kick through from Rovers. Trapped well enough by Ian Jackson and there's a good return. And the Lions now starting this set on halfway. Here's Davy Garrahan. And a slip there again from the Lions. Still manages to make another five metres forward. Cooper involved in that tackle. Ball's worked through the hands. Spread out through the hands of Franklin, sorry. And now the Lions on the Rovers 30. Drop off pass there, but again, good defence. But the Lions up to the 20 now. First real attacking chance for the Lions, there's a kick over the top by Franklin, but it holds up well. And a knock on now from Rovers, so the Lions with their first great opportunity now to score, to get some points on the board. Conditions playing the part again on that occasion, Rovers just not able to take that ball in. It was Ryan Strafford over on that far side. So the Lions attacking that short side on the first tackle. And again. And the Lions over. That's the call. No, says your referee, you're a metre short. That was close, so here's Franklin. Good defence from the Rovers to keep the Lions out there. And there's the tricky winger, Jake, per tricky half pass, sorry, Jake Perkins. Lions work it out to this right hand judge now. Got a slip there. Here's the last tackle now. It's a kick through, it's going to hold up, is it? No, it's not. That's going to be a tap restart on the 20. Got 15 minutes on the clock, it's Featherston Rovers nil, Featherston Lions nil. And here are the Rovers now, working out from their own line. Stableford waits, he'll move that ball out. A good defence from the Lions. That's a good drive in there from Curtis McDonald. Plays the ball. The ball finds its way to Luke Cooper. Cooper gets Rovers over halfway, that's a great run. And not only does he get Rovers over halfway, he wins a penalty as well. Doesn't like something. Neither do the Lions. The Lions asking the question of Mr. Bloom. But excellent work from Luke Cooper there. Getting the working the ball into the Lions half and winning a penalty as well. The Lions then. Ill discipline costing them on that occasion. And Mr. Bloom in discussion with the Lions. Oh, 
So Rovers with a penalty. Great defence of the Lions, swarming round the Rovers there and pushing him back further metres, using the surface as well. Here come the Rovers now. Through the hands of Sowerby it goes. Rovers attacking down this left hand edge, that's great play. Cuthbertson. Find Sowerby. What a hit, I could feel that and hear that from here. Louis Brown with a kick for the corner. I thought for a minute it might hold up, but it's just too much on it. So the ball skips loose. Lions are going to make a change. We're going to see the introduction of Sam Millard. And also we're going to see Brandon Gibbons coming on as well. Oh, there's a, a juggle of about six times from Joe Fox. In the end, he just couldn't hold on. So the Lions have made a change. Uncle Millard and Gibbons. And off comes Adam, Car Adam Curtis. And off come George Nuttall. Here's Liam Blockley. Cuthbert's and weights and he moves that ball in field to Ethan Flowers. As Rovers make a change. And on comes Jay Joint. And it's Luke Cooper who's come off for the Rovers. Once again, the referee is speaking to the Lions captain. Another penalty then for the Rovers. Louis Brown fans touch. Here goes Brad Hill. Midway through the first half here at the Big Fella Stadium. Featherston Rovers nil, Featherston Lions nil. Rovers playing in a, a chain strip of red and white hoops today. The Lions playing in the traditional blue and white. There's a dummy. I thought for a minute the Rovers might be over for a second. But once again it's great defence. Cuthbertson. Tries to force his way over, but unable to do so. There's about three kicks through from Rovers. The ball doesn't want anybody holding up and the surface water there. In that corner of the, the main stand corner, clubhouse corner if you like, deep surface water, the ball held up ridiculously there. But Rovers' defence is now on top, pinning the Lions back. But there comes a penalty from Mr. Bloom. Said it took him beyond the horizontal, so a relieving penalty for the Lions. That first drive from Ricky Williams just holds on and plays the ball. Dean Gamble trots in, attacking half back now, and he moves the ball out to that left hand side. A drop off pass, and there's a break. The Lions are away. <coughs> what a dummy that one is! What a break from Jack Townen. The Lions have got an overlap! 
A three, a two man overlap has been bombed. The Lions now fighting to get over to a, a Pats line defence. But there was a two man overlap. Ball now is back in field, it's going to be a cross field kick. It's going to be just too much on it. But what an opportunity that was for the Lions. A great break it was from Jack Town and through the middle. And then he had support to his left. A three man overlap initially, that became two. Not taken. The chance goes begging. And then a cross field kick towards the other corner on the last. The ball skidded dead in, go dead in field, should I say. A let off for Rovers. And now they're looking to try and work out. Rovers wanting a penalty. The player's not happy with something there. That looks like a swinging arm. The referees penalised Rovers for a knock on, though. There did look to be a swinging arm in there from the Lions. The referee happy enough with that, though. So the Lions with another opportunity on this Rovers line, 20 metres out. Six tackles on the Rovers line to attack. And that's a great first drive in, it's still going. What a run that one is from Ricky Williams. And here's David Garrahan now. But he's held up just short. A pass behind, that's the conditions, I think, as much as anything. The Lions have lost the momentum. Been picked up there, though, by Jake Perkins. Through the hands they go, this works out to the winger this time. But a slip over on that far side by Kieran Redford. Here are the Lions again now, though. Looking to burrow over, using the pitch. It's out to Redfern, who slips in the conditions. Frustration for the Lions, not able to get over. Rovers hang on again, though. Still Featherstone Rovers nil, Featherstone Lions nil. We've had 25 minutes in the narrow strewn first half. In these conditions, both teams Grinding out a real workmanlike performances from both teams. So Rovers work it out to this left-hand edge now. A good defence from the Lions. Two in the tackle, one of which is Ricky Williams. There's a penalty for a high tackle, and this this has been bubbling for the probably about the last ten minutes or so, and now it has finally boiled over. All the officials on trying to separate the players. Jamie Bloom is trying to separate the players as well. It was a high tackle, no doubt about it, but I think that's more frustration than anything else. Referee and officials sending the Rovers players away. Also sending Danny Glassell away. So the referee now in discussion with both touch judges. It looks like they might have thought for a minute he was going for his pocket then. So who's, who's being called out then? 
It is for Rovers, Matt Stableford. Can't quite see who it is for the Lions. Come from that glassel. It's glass. It's one of the Glassell brothers for the Lions. It's Danny Glassell. We're spoken to for the Lions. And Matt Stableford was spoken to for the Rovers. The outcome is a penalty for the high tackle. So it's a Rovers penalty at that. But I'm delighted to welcome to a wet and windy Big Fella Stadium. Good afternoon, Joe. Afternoon, Ben. Apologies for the delay. I was shifting a piano. Lovely. Torrential conditions down here. Rovers playing in the chain strip of red and white, which confused me for about 10 minutes at the start of the game. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure Feb Lyons having a wake it, Ben. Uh, tell you what, though, conditions like this would be perfect for the Lions coach, Jamie Rooney, wouldn't it? And we saw the kicking game that they had last year when they came up here to play York. Sorry, I'm a bit out of breath. I've just run up these stairs. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure they could be loving that. Put a couple in the air, test the fullback. Certainly, indeed. It has been a very error strewn first half. Just keep... And there's a mistake again. We've already had fisticuffs once. We missed, a... we missed some handbags at 10 paces a couple of minutes ago as well. But a mistake there from the Rovers. A mistake there from the Lions, sorry. No, it's the Lions with head and feed at the scrum on their own 20 metre line. The surface water is ridiculous, especially for that new stand end kicking up so much. Jamie Bloom, the referee, has done a good job so far this afternoon. And here are the Lions attacking down that left hand edge now. But that defence from Rovers and the Lions forced him to touch. So we've just coming up to 10 minutes left in the first half. Still Featherstone Rovers nil, Featherstone Lions nil. Joe, your thoughts on the teams? Well, there's certainly a couple of interesting ones in there, isn't there, Ben? You know, the amount of people who will have dreamed of playing on this pitch in that Lions team, they're going to be well up for it today. And I've not been here for the game, but it's certainly, it's certainly showing in the scoreline. Feverston, the Rovers, they're giving plenty of opportunity to the young lads and they've got a chance to impress. They've clearly not made enough of an impression so far, though. Louis Brown at number six moves from fullback to standoff from last week. He's had a good first half up to now. Been orchestrating one or two moves. But the conditions is probably the biggest winner out of everybody. It's beating both teams at the minute. But the Rovers, 25 metres out now. Stableford. That ball goes through the hands. And once again. And the Lions hoofs the ball forward. It's there we are. It's a kick on the fly. That's exactly what we talked about. Louis Brown, though. <laughs> well done. Slidy along the turf to claim that ball. And it's going to go back for the free play. That was smart from Brown because the players weren't able to go around him with him on the floor like that. And he knew he'd get there. He knew he'd be able to slide along. Sure enough, he did. Using the conditions to perfection, Louis Brown there. Sliding from 10, fully 10, 15 metres away from the ball. But able to claim that ball back for the Rovers but it was on a free play so the Lions are going to have head and feed 25 metres out. Pleasing to see that even in this torrential rain that Rovers are still willing to throw the ball out, try and put a move on, try and get something to work with a set play. Unfortunately Ethan Flowers there being the one to knock on and he's put us under the kiosk. Here are, the here are the Lions then. Good play there, they're up to halfway now.
And there is a penalty from Mr. Blue. So the Lions then. Gamble from Action Halfback is one of their danger men for sure. Through the hands it goes. And a half break. Gaz Gale there, we saw with the break. And he was there. He had the awareness to get the offload away. Very nearly for the Lions. They put the kick in. They know he's got a hold up. No. He's not quite reached it, but. Perfect positioning, as we said from the referee, Mr. Blue. It was positioned perfectly on that dead ball line. See, the ball had gone dead, but close. And the Lions have come close on a couple of occasions, Joe, that you missed. They had a great breakthrough earlier in the first half. And they forced a three-man overlap, which quickly became two. But the ball then bombed and then a crossfield kick later on in the set. He, he, nothing. It was a great bit in house, a great bit of opportunism, and he very near saw them break the deadlock. Now, though, with Rovers on the attack, can they get up the other end of the field? That penalty will certainly help them. In discipline, not what the lines are needing. And the referee's going to speak to both captains here. Danny Glassell for the Lions and Matt Stableford for the Rovers are just being spoken to. And saying, look, you know, we've had enough now. Yes, the conditions are bad, but the next one going in the bin. So it's a penalty for the Rovers. Not maybe got their legs on it that they would have wanted, but nevertheless, start this set just short of halfway now, and then they are up to halfway. Here goes Drake Joins. Gets Rovers up to the Lions 40 now. That's another strong drive in as well. That's a good drive in there from Dennis Sowerby. Another player has looked impressive in this first half. Liam Blockley now. A pass along the floor. That's just reminiscent of the conditions, really. A loose pass along the floor. The Rovers couldn't pick it up. In a promising position again, but it was on the last. So that'll be the turnover, Joe. It's easy enough to say that they should be doing better, but when you had to dig it out in a puddle like that to <laughs> take it from acting half, it's difficult to be too harsh on the lads. Here come the Lions then. George Nuttall. It's almost a battle against the pitch as well as the opposition team at the minute. That play of the ball was about <laughs> as far away from a play of the ball I've ever seen, but the, re the referee's got no choice. He can't give anything against there. He, he's got to be forgiving of the players. Rovers now looking to spread the play though. It's Louis Brown going down that fringe. On the Does well, play. he realises his first tackle, keeps hold of the ball, six you up the jumper, played to the conditions perfect. He's got that a smart on, head on his shoulders. He certainly have. That was on the free play, so Louis Brown, there is their first tackle now. It's certainly an uppy jumper sort of game, isn't it? The old famous winter rugby up the jumper time, just to try and keep hold of the ball more than anything. Definitely, just try and get it down there and work to your kick. And hope something good happens off the bounce because it's a complete lottery as to where the ball goes. It's holding up on that occasion rather than side here long. And it's well covered. <laughs> Once again, Jake Joint not able to take that ball in. So the Lions trying the long kick on the free play. But again, not coming off. Rovers alert to that. Chasing back to close it down. Interesting. To see Jake Joint in the side again, I remember seeing him up at Cumbria a few years back. Uh, Stuart Dickens, I believe, was the only other player capable of playing prop that day uh, and was filling in for an otherwise 
depleted squad. Not seen much of him since, but he's got an opportunity once again now. Indeed, he has a very, it's a very big player, very big looking unit, got a lot of strength to him as well. He's run that ball in well when he's had the opportunities in this first half. Well, if you want a game for a big lad to impress, these are the perfect conditions for it, surely. Indeed they are, and here's the Lions and into the Rovers, 40 to go. Show it once, but there are the conditions again, I think. And it's a break from Scott Glassell from Matt's in half back. Gets the offload away, does he? No, that's a knock on, says the referee. So once again, a stoppage in play ahead and feed to Rovers in the scrum. I'd love to know what the actual error count is in this first half and the amount of scrums. It's been very high. But in the conditions, you don't know what more you can expect. So here are, the, here are the Rovers, and from the base of that scrum, that first tackle straight back into where the scrum was set. So good drive through, work, working those legs, but good defence from the Lions. That's good play out there. Here's Curtis McDonald. That looked a, a bit dodgy to me, but Mr. Bloom and the officials happy enough on halfway. Here's Stableford. Moves the ball out. Total breakdown in communication there from the Rovers and turning over possession once again to the Lions. Indeed, sure enough, Louis Brown and Ethan Flowers looking to link up there, but. Not sure whether the dummy's being given or he's looking to run on himself. And sure enough, the ball ends up on the ground yet again. Possession turns over to the Lions. So here are the Lions and on the Rovers 30. Through the hands it goes, out towards that left-hand edge. That's a good kick over from Franklin, but good covering back from Brad Sutcliffe, who takes the tackle. And Rovers once again starting on their own try line. Good kick through from the Lions there, Joe, pinning Rovers back just where they want them. Now they can try and force yet another error. Absolutely, they're the ones playing it in the right areas of the field, and the amount of mistakes there have been, you don't want to be playing down at this end if you're the Rovers. So here are the Rovers then. Just outside their own 20. Stableford. So gonna be it's gonna be a deep kick. It's a good kick, it turns the Lions round. And that is a brilliant kick. Using the conditions to perfection, Joe. Not only does it stay in field, it turns the Lions round and gives Rovers a real chance now to get the defensive line. Much set. more impressive there from the Rovers. Stableford's getting himself that little bit of extra time around the hook so he can give a clean pass away. And the man receiving has got time to handle it. Then Salby kicks early doors, makes good distance on it, and gets them down the right end. Here are the Lions now, and they have to work out. Here goes Scott Glassell. He's lost that ball, though. And Rovers, on the back of that great kick and a good defensive set, show get possession back. Well, the line's looking to be off the cuff there with a little chip over the top, but it's not come off, and it's meaning Rovers can pile the pressure on in their half. That kick has put them in the right area again. And that is the end of the first half. A first half of a never soon first half. That's probably the only person, the only victor here so far, I think, is the conditions. Error after error from both sides, but it's making the game entertaining. Show your thoughts. Well, it is important that the players learn to adapt to conditions like this because who's to say it won't come up in the season and all those players out there today will be all the more prepared for it, particularly as they are the younger members of our squad who perhaps don't have as much experience. 
playing in a variety of conditions. Looking at that performance, who were the players who were particularly impressed for you, Ben? Uh, Louis Brown at standoff for overs impressed, and Danny Salvi with his kicking game as well. Uh, really emphasised by that kick towards the end of that first half. Over, not only find, keeping the ball in field, but turning the Lions round, and the Rovers able to build on the back of that. The kicking game, all important on a day like this, and what you have to remember when you're playing Feverston Lions or any other amateur side is that this is their opportunity to take the scalp to make a show of themselves. Oh, this is a Wembley to them. Indeed it is, it's our time here at the Big Fella Stadium. Wind sweat, rain soaked. But it's half time, it's Featherston Rovers nil, Featherston Lions nil. Welcome back to the second half here at the Big Fella Stadium. The Lions are out, we're just wasting the Rovers. It's still Featherston Rovers nil, Featherston Lions nil. Uh, very I think it's fair to say the only victory in that first half is the condition. The Lions bombing at the, the best play cut chance they had when they had a three man overlap. Didn't take it and the chance went to waste. Joe, what do you think has been said at half time? Both coaches will know that the key to winning this game is mastering the conditions. It, He's just completing your sets, getting down the right end of the field, and then anything can happen at a kick. You don't know how the ball's going to react to hitting the surface here. So you can chance your arm at the end of a set if you're in the right area. Indeed you can. We're still awaiting the light of the Rovers to come out, should I say. With the game sunship here, <laughs> making their opponents stay out a couple of minutes, get a call. I think what it is, is yeah, just that. Rovers stayed in the warmth as long as they can, really, because of the, of the wind and rain a bit, uh, but the cold out there as well, Joe, must have an effect on the players. Once they get going, to be fair, Ben, they won't be feeling the cold. Sure enough, here are the players coming out now, but you don't want to be stood about waiting to get going, that's for sure. Here are the Rovers then for this second half, in there. Change strip of red today. The Wilbur the Lions get first use of the ball in this second half, playing towards the new stand end. Jamie Bloom brings the ball out, and here we go. It's still nil nil at half time. I can't remember the last time I said that in a rugby match. I think it was no, tell a lie. It was um, Dewsbury away a couple of years ago. That match that we lost 11-10. So we, well, yeah, we, chance we, we had a couple of penalty <laughs> opportunities in that first half. Don't take me back to that, Ben. I'm, I'm still irritated at it. Could have changed that season. That well, extra that's the couple last nil-nil at half time. I can remember Roby being involved in before today. Likewise here, another good kicker from Louis Brown. We saw plenty last week, and that's perfect. Bounce as well, and they're gonna have to bring it back from their own in goal. Tackled on the ten. Good work from the Rovers. Indeed, a great start for the Rovers from that kickoff. Here come the Lions now. They're looking to work out. They'll be. They'll take confidence from that first half. The fact it is still nil-nil. They have been very much in this match as well. And here they are now, just short to the thirty. Today's second half will only be thirty minutes long. But today's second half will be thirty minutes long. Uh, the official attendance for today's game is 1,209, which is absolutely fantastic. Thank you for your support. Just a couple, of, a couple of announcements made there on the Tannoy. Just while the Lions are attacking the Rovers 20, today's second half is only going to be 30 minutes long. I'm assuming that's due to the conditions. And a fantastic attendance announced, Joe. 1,209 in conditions like today. That's superb, isn't it? Unreal. Two FEF teams come together. I don't think you'd get a crowd like that for any other side playing against an amateur side from the local area. And the Lions but are the over! The Lions That's why have they've gone. come to see it, Ben. Because the underdogs are taking it. They've come over the game plan, they've got down the right end of the field and they've flung their way over between the sticks. 
What a fantastic start for the Fenniston Lions. Can't see who the try scorer was, but what a way to start. It's Danny Glassell who's got it, you know. Burrowed over from Hatton Half, Joe. Great work from the Lions to get the position under the sticks. And then Danny Glassell from Hatton Half able to get over. And that's a perfect start to the second half for the Lions. Certainly is, Ben. They couldn't have asked for more. You can tell that they'll have been talking about that during half time. Just get yourselves down there and anything can happen. Managed to force his way over from acting half. It's always going to be hard to stop. Simple stuff, but simple stuff provided the solution. Sends it between the uprights, and that's a six point lead for the Lions. Rovers need to show some spirit now. Perfect for the Lions. What a way to start that second half. A try from Martin half back. And it's just to start the Lions will have wanted. They now look to build on this. Rovers though, John, need to hit back and hit back quickly. There's Louis Brown with another kickoff. That's another great kickoff. But Rovers need to hit back quickly, Joe. Absolutely do, Ben, because you know that the Lions will have their tails up now. They're raring for it. And here are the Lions. That's good defence, though, from Rovers. Three in the tackle, Luke Cooper involved. Scott Glassell with that drive in now. <laughs> Sam Wilson is on for the Lions. He's the acting half back at the minute. That's a great break though. Danny Glassell. That's a great kick through, but it's held up in the in the wet again. And that's a good return from the Lions. Joe, a good end to that set and a good return from Rovers, sorry. Definitely, but the Lions have come away with the ball. We lost in the collision there. It's a good recovery though on that far side. And the Lions will be looking to get over once again now. So the Lions then with the ball in the 20. The referee's going to penalise that. No, it's, not, it's a knock-on. The knock-on is awarded. So let's off Challenge there for the Judge Rovers. Firm but fair and showing off the Lions weren't able to finish off the opportunity there near the line. Rovers need to break out now, though they can't afford a mistake in this area. Not in these conditions. So a 30-minute second half. I can only presume that is due to the conditions. And if anything, the rain to me seems to be getting even stronger and the wind even stronger at the minute. Here are the Rovers. That's a great break, though. And slides forward, makes another three metres after being tackled simply by sliding forward. And the Rovers now. This is good play from Featherstone Joe, working through the sets, holding the ball as they've worked to the kick and they can get a good kick away and try and get some territory now. Ball spilled there but spilled backwards and so the Lions have got a break out from just inside their own 20. Rovers definitely need to look to pin them back now Ben, so they're starting up the right end of the field. Here are the Lions, that's good play. The ball's come loose, Rovers have come up with it, says the referee. Appeals for the rip, but it's the judge to have just come loose on the carry. There's Jack Townend. Sauerby works it out, now he's gone to Brown. 
Brown keeps hold of that ball as he works it wide. Salve and Brown have shown a good link up this afternoon. And here's Brad Hill now. As Rovers make a change, on comes Jake Joints again. Cooper with the little step there, looks for the offload. The ball spilled, it's spilled backwards, but it's picked up by a Lions man. It's picked up by George Nuttall, the front rower. Possession turned over once again. Rovers can't afford to do that. They had a good opportunity to take some points there. The yeah. Lions now breaking out, though, scooting out from the rook. Simple one man drives, that's all they're doing, Joe, from the back of the rook every time. They're playing to the conditions, Ben, and it's paying dividends. And there is a penalty. The clock is stopped again. Well, that's exactly it, Joe Rovers. So the Lions, sorry, every play of the ball, it's a different man in it, acting halfback, uh, and they're just scooting every time, making five, ten metres with that. That's all they need to do now, isn't it? Absolutely, Ben. The Lions aren't the one who needs to pile on the pressure. They can just keep it down in Rovers territory, force them to play out. Oh, hang on a minute. They don't need to risk here. anything. There's a yellow card out for the Lions. I think that could well be a red, Ben. I, ca I can't. It looked red. That could have been reflection. We can barely see a thing up here. <laughs> so there, there is a card out, though, for the Lions. That could be costly. That, I think, Joe, that was actually for dissent because the referee had given the decision and they'd awarded the penalty already and he was walking away and I think the Lions player said something to him. And he's taking his shirt off so we're not going to have a clue who he is, I'm afraid. <laughs> it's Josh Hardcastle. Josh Hardcastle. We've got it on the zoom. And there's and another penalty for Hardcastle, the Rovers now. Who's left the field, a talented player. Remember him putting on a great showing against York in the Challenge Cup last year. It's interesting, Joe, you said he thought about the red. He has gone straight down the tunnel. Now, if that had been a yellow card, surely he'd have made his way to the bench, but it's gone straight down the tunnel. And Lions' discipline now needs to keep their heads to the Lions now, starting to lose the discipline, and the, the referee is just going to speak to somebody, I think, here. But three penalties on the bounce in quick succession, Joe. Piggybacking Rovers to where they are now. Indeed, those penalties are giving Feverson a great opportunity in the right territory, up at the Lions' end of the field. They've not been down here much. They squandered their last chance. They've got another though, and it's with a men, with a man fewer opposing them. You need all the men you can get. There is the tap. So Rovers now aren't going to get a better opportunity to pull this game level at the moment. Interesting there, it was um, stable for it, sorry. A lot of the numbers now becoming unclear. Stable for the attacking half and moves the ball out to the left. Through the hands he goes and Rovers. Oh! <laughs> It was beautiful play to work it out, but then the final pass is put behind and the ball goes out to touch. Oh dear, Tommy Newball just couldn't quite keep hold of it there. It was always going to be a difficult one to take in. You want the pass perfectly in front of you. It's a wet ball, it's always going to be hard to take in. A chance goes If begging. he had that done though, Ben, I fancy that he'd have been taking a difference down to a mere two points. Quite possibly there. A great chance goes begging yet again for overs. Important <laughs> that they show their stuff now in defence though, Ben. And it's starting again, look. You missed one of these in the first half, show. Here we are again, round two. Seconds out, round two. And it's, oh dear me. It's quite a coming together, Ben. There's this is men really, on the floor, really there's good. arms swinging. This is boiled over big time. The and officials I, unable to break them apart at the moment. I fancy we could be seeing another card of some colour here. It's still going on. 
Oh, men on the ground. This is a more run, Stephen. Oh, this is ridiculous. Gets a great referee. Somebody needs to stop it. He's very somehow. limited as to what he can do, Ben, if the players are going at it. And in these conditions, they're not wanting to get back to the game. I fancy we'll be seeing another card or two here coming out. Certainly, Ben. Some of the punches that there were being some serious swinging arms there. Men on the floor as well. Jerry Bloom's got a lot of discussing to do here with his two touch judges again. But I fancy, Joe, we're going to be seeing at least one more card here, if not more, surely. Disappointing from the Rovers, Ben. They were down the right end of the field, they were just starting to look that bit better. They'd worked out a nice move to that left-hand side. Weren't able to get over, but they were starting to be in control of the game. It's bubbled over and you sense that all that momentum might be lost now. The referee in discussion with both of his touch structures. He needs to try and find out who the main perpetrators were. Couldn't see from here too far away. And then obviously, as it progressed, it got further and further away. Rovers are being called out. Just can't see who it is. There's two Rovers called out. A card's out. Uh, we said it would be. Flowers certainly is there. He has two a red shot to him. For Rovers. With Jacob Joey also sent walking down the tunnel. So we've got Lions out now. Lions player also called out. He's trying to confirm the identity of the player there, I believe, <laughs> by turning him round. <laughs> Jamie Bloom's got a lot of sorting out to do here. Cards out again. A the red. Lions come. And I think that could be it. Two from two from Rovers go. One goes from the Lions. Eleven aside it is, Ben. Hopefully that'll calm things down. You do sense that was part of the test there. Somehow I don't think that's going to calm it down. I think it's just going to move a lot more. There were a fair few who were capable of being sent away from the field in all of those encounters. <laughs> a few of the chief culprits have been dismissed, but certainly it's capable of bubbling over because there's a fair few still hanging about then and we're down to football now folks never mind rugby league it's football numbers 11 v 11 what a penalty that was it's from a the very lions good kick to touch he's a brave kick to touch with the wind blowing about but he's chanced his arm and they're on the attack again now the lions here go the lions and what oh, a hit. the shot is put in oh this is going to be on the very... first tackle this is going to be, Joe, a very tasty 15 minutes. Indeed. I fancy we've not seen the last of the Vinsticons. What a kind of warm-up you want in pre-season, though. <laughs> the knock-on then comes from that tackle, so... The shots come off, Rovers have come away with possession. It's the kind of thing you try early in the tackle count. And that's exactly why. The rain teeming down here at the Big Fella Stadium. Settling on the pitch, making conditions, well, very, probably unmanageable is probably a, a nice way of putting it. And changes being made. Here are overs now then. Oh, that looks like a swinging arm to me. Rovers now. That's great defence, though, by the Lions. Adam Curtis in the tackle. This, you can still see the tensions there, Joe. Can't you? Between the two teams. Other players not involved in the tackle, becoming involved and trying to push opposing players away. These are the players where we find out who's the characters in 
this young Rovers team, though, who's capable of picking someone out of the bag when they are well and truly up against it? Because these Lions players, they're giving it to them this afternoon, Ben. They are Luke indeed. Cooper there taking it in. He's not a man who shies away. They take it down that short That's side, they're working. Play. He's gone left, Super. new ball, he's kicked it on the fly there. And they're still going. The Lions have to hack it dead. That's better from Featherstone Rovers, Joe. Working it down that left-hand side. The ball looks to be coming loose, but Rovers, we have got to manage to get a foot to it. And Rovers forcing the drop out. Well, we were seeing a bit of bit down the middle. The Lions were certainly matching the Rovers, but the Rovers players thought, you know what, let's go around them and show them a bit of classy passing play there. Worked the way round and could well have been in there. Rovers then. Great opportunity. I managed to force the drop out. Waiting for a ball. We've got one now. This is going to be one of the most difficult dropouts we'll ever have seen a player take. Yeah, the ball barely bouncing. Good use of the feet there from Brown. And he sends Joint in. What Joint goes clattering in. Knocks the first man down and works his way to the 20. That's yes. exactly the kind of drive you want first up. Certainly is. And now Brad Hill follows in. What a drive it was from Joint and Hill now. Hill's going to be looking for that quick play so they can work it out now. Sure enough, they send it down that left side. It's Cooper who takes it in. Cooper swings away. Just short there. Oh, it's the best of the play, the ball. Rovers are over. Unbelievable. That looks to me to be a very untidy play, the ball, Joe. But the referee happy enough with that. Hesitant at the pick up, but it's come off. He's better to make sure you take it cleanly. And it's Matt Stableford who's gone over for matching her. That appears to be the way of things today, Ben. It's, it is the simple stuff that is paying. So Rovers back to within two with ten minutes left here at the Big Fella Stadium. It's Featherston Rovers four, Featherston Lions six, eleven v eleven. We're seeing another change being made here. The kick is successful. So we're all tied up, Joe. Rovers 6, Lions 6. Here we are, honours even, 10 minutes to go. I like variety in rugby league games, man. This is one unlike any we've ever seen at the big fellas here, I think, in recent times, certainly. And we still don't know how it's going to end, of course. No, indeed. <laughs> Great kick off there though from the Lions. The turning rovers round, they're not able to trap it, so they're having to start from deep. You can see the surface water every time. The ball comes loose. The Lions have it down this left edge. Can't quite release it and force back their joint in the tackle once again. And now the Lions are the ones who drop it. Tell you something, I bet it's more like playing with a bar of soap than a rugby ball probably today, Joe. You need to be wearing wellies out there, Ben. <laughs> what did he say? Just confirmation there that this second half is half an hour long and there won't be a golden point if the game ends as a draw, Ben. Uh, they build which I don't think surprises too many. The Bill Cup Memorial Trophy will be shared. 
between the Rovers and the Lions. I don't think they'd want to share anything at the moment. Rovers in possession. Oh, you could see it down the le that left-hand wing there. Joe Ryan Stafford was away. If the ball could have got to him, but good defence from the Lions to keep him out. It's, it really is a forwards match today, isn't it? You could, there's no really chance for any of the three quarters or the half. You say so. that, but we spread it out wide now. We're looking to get it away. The pass isn't completed there to the wing again, and turnover is going to go to the Lions. You know, the backs are giving it a go when they see out. It's just not quite coming off. Absolutely, it's a day for the forwards, but there's always an opportunity to impress regardless of your position. I do wonder, though, how are they going to arrange sharing the Bill Cup Memorial Trophy? I mean, the Rovers get to keep it on weekends or every other Saturday? <laughs> That's an interesting one, sir. Who picks up from school? <laughs> Here are the Lions on halfway. And there's a kick early. That's a great kick. And the clever, ones... A clever kick there. It's <laughs> forcing a scrum right on the 10. Right in the boggiest part of the field. The one time you want the ball to hold up, I was watching some, some practicing some kicking before the match, and the five out of six kicks held up right tight to the touchline. And then the one time you want it to, it skips dead. <laughs> sure enough, that's the look of the draw when you play out on a surface that's in a state just like this one. I know we had problems with the pitch at the beginning of last season, Ben. <laughs> when we had to play our first game against Tunsley over at Wakefield, I'm not sure the turf was quite in this state and it had just been newly laid. Here are Rovers again, they're attacking down that left hand channel again. <laughs> Nobody's just able to make any sort of yardage at the minute, Joe, are they? Every time it's. Maybe two or three drives and the defence are up to you every time now. Indeed. Whether the referee's playing a narrow 10 or whether it's just the conditions, well, that looks oh, Fantastic offload. Johnny running sideways. He sends it out wide to the right. They look for the pass, but can't get it away. We were way down the fringe with the overlap. Send it inside now. It's Brown. He takes the step. That was great play from Matty Hobson. And Jack Carroll is now the acting halfback. Oh. He's got the cleanest jumper on the field. And here goes Carroll now. He's just entered. That, that shirt's not going to be clean for long, Ben. <laughs> Matty Hobson is acting halfback. Moves the ball out to Jake Joins. Jack Carroll waits. Through the hands it goes. Off the Lions. That is fantastic play from the Featherstone Lions, Joe. Went for the intercept, got a hand to the ball. Realised it would have been a knock on and six more. Able to dive forward and retain possession. He definitely is. Rovers look certain to be in for a try there, but instead they've lost possession of the ball. And here are the Lions on the 30 now. I tell you what, but I don't fancy going for drop goal in conditions <laughs> like this. <laughs> it's that sort of time now, though, Joe. Five, less, just under five minutes left here, the big fellas. It's still the Rovers six, the Lions six. It's the Lions in possession. I'd love to tell you who that is, Ben, but my team sheet's turned to um, paper mache. I'm guessing from the first who just shouted, that'd be George Nuttall. <laughs> <laughs> what a super kick that is. That's held up perfectly, that job. Rovers have to run it out. And oh. if the Lions can force a mistake, they've got a great chance. They 100% do, Ben. 
I don't listen to calls from the stands, by the way, I'm a referee, we never do that. <laughs> Except maybe at Catalan. Here are the Rovers, then. Just need to play it safe, don't need anything too fancy. Oh, well, they are working the overlap. That's a fantastic run. It's He's Will Plimmer. It's Will Plimmer. What a fantastic running from Plimmer there. Played with him at junior level very briefly at the Lions and run rings on me every training session, of course, because he is such a talented <laughs> athlete. Not difficult to do, to be fair, that job. Here's Jack Carroll again from Matson Halfback. There we see it. I said I wouldn't like to try and attempt to drop drop men, and that is exactly why. It was as close to being a touch finder as going between the uprights. It's that sort of time, though, with two and a half minutes left. I know you missed much of the first half, Joe, from what you've seen. What are your thoughts on your man of the match? Well, the man of the match has to be in the forwards, man, because that's where the true battle of this game has been. And while some of the backs have been impressive, I've particularly been impressed from some of the smart play from Louis Brown. Showing now beyond his years, showing a maturity to know when to keep hold of the ball and when to use it, but plumbing it up the middle, taking some really brave drives, has been Jake Joint. He's really impressed me today. So Jake Joint gets the man of the match. He has had a wow of a game, especially starting off the bench. He's certainly made an impact when he has come on. And that's, oh, a, that's a fantastic break. What a run that was. Brad Hill, I believe it was there. Now Rover's sending it down that far left side. A slip, but manages to keep hold of the ball. Now they play it just outside the 20. They work it in, it's a kick through, it's bobbly along the ground. But it's and well it's great for the Lions now. Josh Hardcastle, I thought he'd been sent off. Either that's why it's Jack Town, end one or the other. Could have sworn I saw number four, man. Like Redfern, but there we are. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> Here's the Lions anyway. In with mud on his shirt. <laughs> oh, what a step that is! Oh, can't quite keep, can't quite keep his feet. That is Josh Hardcastle, is that one? Unbelievably close now. And the Lions now are into the last minute. Are they going to go for the long range just to win it? With some effort, if he does, he's got it lined up. Slightly closer than the previous <laughs> one. I'm not sure he quite deserved the use from the stand. Didn't it go, though? The clock on the scoreboard has now reached zero. We are reaching the bitter end, and what have Rovers got now? Not a great deal, looking by that. There we are, that is the full time we saw. Scores finished six apiece. Unbelievable sights that we've seen, and somehow only two tries, Ben. Indeed, the try for the Lions came right at the start of the second half through Scott Glassell. That was converted by Richard Franklin, and then the Rovers try coming from Stableford. Both tries, Joe, coming from Martin Halfback. Says a lot about the conditions today as well, doesn't it, that? 100% was. This was not a day for playing, swinging the ball out, ball in hand. It was a day for plumbing it down the middle and working your way over from acting half. That's what both teams have done. It's what both teams did equally well. 
There was a bit of gun down the middle, though, and some of those players will learn some things in that game that they can take into this season, because there's a couple of them fancy outfits with some players on some big wages who won't be ready for some of the grunt that those lads gave out there today. Indeed, both teams finish with 11 men. After an almighty scuffle in that second half. But it's been a real war of attrition today. Joe, is... yes, it has, sorry. A real war of attrition today out there for both teams just to try and get a foothold and try and build some momentum. It, it certainly has. There was no way of really getting a hold of the game by the scuff of the neck. They were just piling it forward down the middle hoping to keep hold of the ball. By the end of it, they did get more of a grasp of where they were getting success. You can tell things were said at half-time in the approach both teams took. They also knew they only had half an hour and gave it everything in that half an hour. Standout performances for the Lions? Standout performances for the Lions. Likewise, you're looking at the forwards. Difficult to tell when they were pumping it down. You look. Adam Curtis, George Nuttall taking it in time and time again. Never take it backwards step. I think those players will be looking to go upstairs, get themselves a drink. I tell you what, I need a cup of tea. Indeed, indeed full time here at the Big Fella Stadiums in the George Nuttall Memorial Trophy. No cup of tea. No cup, sorry. Benetton Rovers 6, Benetton Lions 6.